today I'm going to teach you how to freeze some winter squash. If you want to look down here, Kurt brought in uh, two giant bushel baskets full of some butternut and I have on my big to-do list to freeze this. And I'm getting started with that today. This is going to be a long process. It takes probably took me a couple days. So I wanted to kind of show you a couple different ways that you can preserve um, any kind of winter squash. So butternut is my favorite. I think it's the sweetest. A while. You can microwave winter squash and this is really easy. So you, first you want to wash it so you can tell it's pretty pretty dirty, right? So I already washed it for you. Um, depending on the size, you're going to cook it for different amounts of time. And I'm just taking a fork or a knife here and I'm just poking holes uh, every couple inches all the way around. Be careful that you don't poke your finger. Um, I'm just going to go all the way around the squash like this. Super easy. It's going to start to kind of seep juices. That's okay. All right. And watch how fast this is. You're going to put it on a glass plate and you're going to pop it into the microwave. And then I'm going to cook it for about, I do about six minutes. And uh, then when that stops, we'll have to flip it over. I want to show you what it looks like when you're done. So um, I'm going to, I microwaved it six minutes and I flipped it. I microwaved it another six or seven minutes. Kind of depends on how big it is. This guy, I think I did seven minutes on each side. And you can see how it gets really smushy. Um, so all you do now is take this off the plate. I let it cool so it's not real hot anymore. And you're just gonna cut it open. Look, look at that. Look how fast wow. and gorgeous that is, right? Beautiful. And so um, then you're gonna scoop out the seeds. They and they just scoop out so easily. So just see how this is now. It just comes real easy out with a spoon. I have a my bowl here. Whoa. And I'm just gonna scrape it out. Kind of our favorite way to eat this, honestly, is just like this, with a little bit of butter and salt on it. But you don't even need that with butternut. It's so sweet. So why am I teaching you about uh, the importance of freezing stuff? Um, as some of you know, I've been doing a project this winter. I've been interviewing some of our CSA members who I would call masters at the CSA, who are just really good at using the whole box. Um, you know, they went that first year, that first year and a half, they went through that learning curve. It was tough. It was hard. They made they waste a lot of food, but they figured out some tips and tricks. So they they are now an ace at using their whole box and doing it well. And so I've kind of been interviewing them and I'm asking them, what are your tricks? What are, you know? What's the shortcut? If I can make that journey faster for CSA newbies, what does that look like? And I've discovered a lot of really neat things. And one of the one of the key themes that's kind of coming out over and over again that's going to be kind of a part of this plan that I'm putting together is that these CB CSA masters have figured out what I call exit strategies for vegetables. So they come to the end of their week and they still have stuff in their, in their fridge or in their pantry and they don't know what to do with it. Well, they have developed these exit strategies so they can quickly um, figure out how to get rid of them. And one of them is knowing what you can freeze and how you can freeze it. So I thought, well, let me teach people how to, how to freeze winter squash. This is super fast and easy. I mean, this took me 14 minutes to cook this squash, and and now I'm just sticking it into this bowl, uh, and then I'm going to throw it into a Ziploc bag, freezer bag, and take the air out and stick it in my freezer. I like to put them in quart size bags. Do you them first? Oh, Kurt, I probably should. Yes, label them first. Um, and, you know, freeze them in the portions that you're going to probably want to use them in, so if you're going to use a giant amount for a huge stew, then you can stick it into a gallon size. But then you're going to straighten it, or flatten it, I should say. Mmm, and snack. Just like that, and I kind of, it's still a little hot, so I'm not going to throw this right into the freezer yet. I can tell it's still kind of steaming up a little bit. That's probably good enough. I don't know if I put any more in there. And then, Kurt, I would write butternut squash on there, since you were teasing me about that earlier. And then once it cools down, just stick it right into your freezer. And then you can just pull it out later on and you know let it thaw, you can make it into a soup, you can put it um, just as a side dish, just heat it up and um, throw a little Parmesan or some spices in there and it's so yummy. You can put it um, into some casserole and pasta, super yummy. Um, the next way that you can cook winter squash, this is probably my favorite way. So I, this is 
is another exit strategy that the masters have learned, the power of roasting. We'll probably do a whole series on roasting. Um, roasting is really easy. You can roast just about any vegetable at the end of the week if you still have it left. And then pop it in a Ziploc bag and use it later. Freeze it and use it later. So I use a, a jelly roll pan. You can also use a higher roasting pan if you like. Um, and I always put a thing of foil down. You don't have to, but I just find it's easier on the cleanup. And then um, all I did was I chopped, cut in half, washed the butternut squash, and then I cut them in half. I do not seed them or take out the stuff inside. Some people do, but it's just easier to, it's kind of hard to scrape that out right now. Then you position it into the pan. And I probably have room to even put more, but I'm not going to risk it. So now I'm going to take this pan. You don't have to do this. You can just put it right into the oven, uh, a 400 degree oven, 375, 400. Usually when you're roasting, it's at least 400 degrees. Um, some people don't add water, but I do because I find, I don't really like it when it gets all caramelized. That's just me personally. Um, I like it to be real soft. Um, so I just put a little bit of water in there and then I'm gonna put it into the oven upside down like this. So you're going to put cut side down. No spices, nothing fancy. I'm just going to stick it right in here. And I'm going to let that cook for about 40 minutes. And you'll know, you'll start to smell it when it's ready. And this is what it looks like. I did a batch this morning. So Kurt, come back over here. You'll be able to tell that it's done because look, it kind of gets these little brown spots on the edge and it all gets crinkly and soft. Um, if it's getting really black, then it's, it's, you got to get it out of the oven. It's ready. You can see most of the water is gone. It's almost like they get steamed when you put that water in there. And again, it's just so soft. Look at those beautiful colors. And again, you're going to just do the same thing. You're going to seed it. Take the pulp out. If you want, you can keep the seeds and roast them. And I'm just going to be doing this all day. So it's about every hour. It takes about an hour to do one sheet pan. Um, so I should be able to, theoretically, I could get through this in a few hours. Um, and I'm going to have a huge stash of this stuff. It's going to last me all winter long, even into the spring when you don't have winter squash, right? So um, this is one of our favorites. So this will take up quite a bit of space in the freezer. Our, a lot of our CSA masters, um, because they freeze so much and they're so good at that exit strategy, a lot of them actually have a separate freezer that they purchased um, so that they can be saving this stuff. So, you know, is that an, an absolute necessity? No. But, you know, if you're really hardcore into this, you may want to invest in a, in a small chest freezer so that you can really maximize this exit strategy. If you enjoyed this video, um, please write a comment or ask a question and I'll try to follow up later. Let's keep learning from each other. Thanks so much guys. Have a great weekend, a great week. See ya.